on the road. Today is the week four, which means it is the last uh, astrology in your creative realm with harmony workshops. And what I'm going to be doing today is actually I'm going to be doing two live readings. We're going to do the readings um, right here on the Zoom. And I'm going to have probably a few guests today. So you guys are going to see people coming in and out and everything like that. And so, yeah, um, you might have uh, some of the people that I'm actually doing their charts present. And if not, then they're going to um, remain anonymous. If they're going to be on here, then of course they're not completely anonymous, right? Um, but yeah, we're going to get it started. I'm going to wait until the about seven o'clock period before I actually start up the presentation, but I want to do some housekeeping and that is going over a few things before we kind of get the show on the road. So that way I can cover all my bases first and foremost without having to uh, break into the session too much. So let's get started on that, okay? Alrighty. So the Harmony Workbook for the month of April will be coming out, uh, like I said, last session. That will be on uh, next Wednesday that you will see that. And so, yeah. And we are going to be switching how we do our newsletter. So that will be coming out this weekend. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be through Gumroad, but I'll be letting you guys know, as always, very transparent about how that will work. But um, I will still be posting all of these replays onto my WordPress, and it is $11.11 to pay for per replay, okay? And so I'm going to put um, all, week, all this week's replays into that. But this week, because I have... Um, on Saturday, the book publishing workshop. I'm not going to be putting the Harmony workshops up on Friday like I usually do for the month of April. I'm going to be doing it on Sunday. So that way I have all three episodes already put into that newsletter. So you don't have too many, too many places to go to look for what you need. Okay. As well as let's check out the websites as well. Make sure you guys go check out amethystlist.wordpress.com. And that is for all things Amethyst Maris, lyrics. We have merch products, uh, art catalog. That's where the gallery is going to be. Oh, awesome. Shalene is here. Oh, so exciting. Very, very exciting. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, darling. If you are open to it, um, it's this will go up on YouTube. So you don't have to use your video if you don't want to. Um, you can do audio if you like. It's all up to you. It's for your um, own comfort level. Um, I'm not going to be starting as of yet. I'm just going to do a little housekeeping first and going over a few things and just kind of waiting um, to see who else is going to kind of pull up. And I'll probably get started around 7.00 two or something like that okay but um if you have anything to say you can you know let me know <laughs> well, it sounds good it's nice to meet you i i am i am a little sick so i'm gonna leave my camera off <laughs> um but yeah no i'm very excited for this thank you for the opportunity to to be a part of it Oh, honestly, I'm so sorry. You're so you're sick, but honestly, I I hope you feel well. And I'm just really happy that like I when you messaged me, I had one space left, and I'm like, oh my god, this will be exciting. The other person's chart that I'm doing, I've done her chart before, but I haven't done your chart, so it's very very exciting to do someone's chart that's brand new to me. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, this is gonna be fun. Very, very fun. I'm excited. Okay, so a few more housekeeping items that I want to cover and make sure is 
make sure you guys uh, go over to the Tropic de Qualia uh, blog that's going to be up. That blog is, um, that is for the AI art, but it has the animes, it's gonna have all of the graphic novels, but it is for mature audiences only. And then Panacea Cafe blog is going to have the conversations with Harmony GPT. And some of those conversations are going to be in regards to power dynamics. Um, they're going to be in regards to um, one of the interesting conversations that we had was dark frequency music and how that is used in power dynamics as well. So there's a few various conversations that we're going to be having on Panacea Cafe and giving different insight um, in the conversations that we get to have with Harmony GPT, having our like own unique GPT to ask questions to, right? Um, <laughs> And as always, make sure you guys go stream the music. And let's see, let's see, let's see. I think I covered everything and I think I can get the presentation started. Or if anyone, if I start this and if anybody, I don't see your name pop up, you're gonna see in this replay. I am so sorry. Once we get into the uh, mode of astrology, sometimes I might not see your name pop up. So I'm so sorry if it takes a long time for me to let you in, but I digress. I'm so sorry, but let's get started on the presentation. I want to be able to do this lovely reading. Um, so again, like uh, Shalene, if you have any questions or anything like that, just feel free. You can either type it in the chat or you can just ask it like, on the video and yeah, anything like that. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so here we think kind of shows any type of personal information. I'll make sure that I cut it out as well. So, and if you feel like you are on the cam or anything like that, if you pop up and you show yourself on the cam for you soul as well, and you don't want to be seen, or you feel like you may have like, I, I'm not saying that you guys do this, but if anyone does, I know I might do this Sometimes on, on Zoom, you might pick your nose, okay? If you, you pick your nose on Zoom and you say, hey, girl, you know, or you may say something, you yawn or something like that, let me know. I will crop it out. I will edit it on my own. <laughs> I will edit it on my own if I see it. Awesome. Very, very cool. Yes. Um, I want people to be able to join up on this workshop. Um it was funny because it was actually sent to a classroom today too. So I'm very, very excited for that to see if any of those students uh, pull up as well. But I want people to be able to access these. So send the information out. The reason why um, we are making this accessible and free is because I want everyone to be able to understand astrology. Not only am I teaching you how to read your own chart, but I want you to be able to read other people's chart and start monetizing the skill. When you monetize the skill and you go out into the world and you start actually treating clients and teaching them through astrology and stuff like that, it trickles down. And then we are going to actually cultivate an entire society that is going to be astrology based, just like the ancient times. And just like those ancient times where they were more attached and built into their better nature because they knew their astrological DNA. They had an understanding of who their ancestors were and they had a, 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 like an understanding of their karmic history and what their lifetimes were. So we wanna be able to do that. And the first way that we do that is by teaching other people astrology. So I, if you feel like it called to show these teachings to anybody, please, please, please send it on to everybody. And also, so if you want to, um, you can leave a message in to do, to do either or. Okay. So astrology in your creative realm. Ooh, 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 ooh. Final week four. I'm so, so excited. Um, we went over a lot of different basics. Um, we had draconian astrology. We've checked out what elective dates are. We've checked out what uh, your perfection years are going to be. And then we also did the basics. And we showed all that by um, using my chart as an example and using uh, like people around me, their ages, for example, for perfection years, okay? And um, so you're in your second house perfection year. So that's just like super amazing. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I'm in my first one because um, yeah. I'm going to go into my second one. 
Ooh, for your birthday. Ooh, when your birthday comes up, you're right. So you're still in your first. Ooh, so when you get into your second, I'm so excited. We'll do like a whole like reading and like kind of go over how like you can really prepare for your second house because with perfection years, it can, it's just like your Saturn return. And we even spoke about Saturn return um, previously as well. Um, so make sure you guys go check out those videos as well if you want any kind of understanding on that. I will go over the basics of astrology 101 in this particular one so i'm not going to jump into the readings i'm going to give you the basics first and then we're going to do the readings but um just like with your saturn return your perfection here can either be a challenge or it can be an enlightenment so there are so many different ways that you can actually like prepare yourself for these elective dates and these particular times and it goes more smoothly for you. And it will be able to, you'll be able to process things a little bit better and you'll be able to understand things a little bit better. And then you would actually learn something and you become enlightened by the things that happen rather than letting the challenges stomp all over you. Okay, so here we go. Today, like I said, a quick one-on-one recap and we are reading two charts of two magical people live. Hi, Shailene. And um, one of the charts, um, Taylor, she, she, she's like, go ahead, tell me the juicy stuff. So <laughs> we don't have to worry about the charts being anonymous, but um, I will be hiding all of the personal information. And if you guys see any, um, know that I will be blocking it out on YouTube as well. I just want to um, keep, keep, keep pushing on that. Okay. And then we will also talk about what's next for Harmony Workshops. Okay. And here we go. So before we start, I learned that I have to do a very, very important uh, disclaimer for uh, astrology when it comes down to certain things, because um, what can end up happening is people can take things out of context. And then um, if they deal with particular astrologers, they could be dealing with practitioners that could your fear, be fear mongering. And we don't want to do any of that. We want to be able to empower people, but we also want to let people know that astrology is a tool and you use it as a tool. You don't let astrology use you. Okay. So astrologers can offer valuable insights into personal tendencies and life patterns through the lens of astrology, which can be a useful tool for self-understanding and personal growth. However, when it comes to mental health, the knowledge and experience of trained mental health experts are indispensable. They have the skills to provide comprehensive support for the psychological well-being and uh, uh, psychological well-being, addressing issues with techniques and interventions that are rooted in rigorous training in the expertise of mental well-being. Astrologers are experts in astrology, okay? Again, the thing is, is mental health experts, psychologists and stuff like that, they're experts in mental health well-being. Make sure that you are cultivating your toolkit of well-being. You would not go, oh, perfect. I'm adding some people to here. Hello, hello, hello. I'm just going to do a little pullback. But um, to make sure, and if you have any questions or if you want to say anything, you can say it on your mic or you can say it in the chat. Um, but welcome. Hello, hello. And like uh, I was saying, though, when we create a toolkit for well-being, you would not go to your cranial specialist for your feet. So don't do the same thing for your astrology, for your mental well-being, okay? Um, we're in an era right now where TikTok and a lot of things are causing fear, more fear than I have ever seen as an astrologer, and I've been an astrologer since 2013, more fear than I've ever seen as being cultivated with astrology being used as it, and it's just a tool, right? So it's important to acknowledge that astrology and other esoteric practices can offer personal insights and guidance, yet they should complement rather than replace professional mental health support. Astrology can help individuals understand themselves better and may offer unique lens on personal challenges. Still, it's imperative to seek counseling and therapy when dealing with mental health issues. When consulting with astrologers, or any other advisors in the realm of personal development and spirituality, must one must be discerning. A responsible practitioner should always respect personal boundaries, provide insight and guidance without inducing fear, and encourage clients to seek professional help when needed. Uh, we spoke about this previously um, in uh, one of our last workshops, and that was, and trigger warning, this was 
um, in regards to the astrologer that many people were following, uh, following on Twitter that took her life and her children's life and the uh, life of her partner. So she used astrology in a way that was more harmful. And what is frightful about that situation is her clients, right? Her clients have now been induced with a type of astrology that is fear mongering. And we always want to use our esoteric tools and our practices as a way to enlighten and not to push fear, okay? So guiding stars, navigating astrology with discernment, and empowerment. Astrology serve as a guiding tool, not a deterministic one. It can illuminate tendencies and cycles, offering perspectives that empower us to navigate life with more awareness. However, discernment is key. An astrologer who focus, focuses excessively on negative potentials or advises extreme measures may not be supportive to your journey. Instead, look for practitioners who encourage personal growth, resilience, and the application of free will. Okay, free will is the most important thing whenever we're discussing any of these things. Okay, all I can do is be like Siri. I can tell you where to find the cookie, but it's up to you to decide if you want to eat the cookie, if you want to crush it up and make it pancakes, whatever you want to do with it, whatever you take with this information, but I ask for you to be responsible with it. Okay. Astrology highlights challenges as opportunities for development. It doesn't seal our fate. Remember, you are the captain of your ship. And while astrology provides a map of the stars, you choose the course to sail. Okay, and now we are going to be moving into the Astrology 101. If you have any questions, please like raise your hand in the chat because I'm going to minimize the uh, you guys on your video so I can read. Um, but raise your hand in the chat and then I'd be able to slow down. Or if the sound or quality gets crazy, just let me know as well. Okay. So Juno, the asteroid of soul contracts. And remember, this is astrology in your creative realm. So this isn't just astrology uh, 101. This is going to be astrology 101 in your creative realm. Okay. So Juno and astrology represents the aspects of bonding, loyalty, and fidelity within our personal relationships. As an asteroid, its placement in our natal chart points to what we need and seek in partnerships, which extends beyond personal relationships into our creative and business collaborations. Understanding Juno's influence helps artists and creatives identify and nurture beneficial partnerships that are soulfully aligned and supportive of their artistic missions. And when I speak of creatives and artists, that is not just talking about people that paint, people that just do music, people that, you know, I'm speaking of all of us. We are all creators, okay? We are all creators. We can all tap into our creativity. Okay, we can all tap into many different facets of creativity. I believe that we could actually all sing with one voice. Okay, so other asteroids and dwarf planets. Okay, so we have Ceres relates to nurturing and nurturing motherhood, caregiving, and our relationship with food and security. Okay, so I can actually read someone's chart and see maybe if they have this uh, like asteroid. Uh, well, dwarf planet in say like their sixth house. And if it is um, a person that maybe has Pisces, I could see a potential. And okay, it does not mean um, a thing that is for sure, but is a pen potentiality, which means it's a capacity for so. So I can see that a person that might have uh, food insecurities. Okay. And then I would be able to navigate and say, okay, like maybe we can have a little bit of conversation in regards to escapism. You know, how do you exercise escapism? What do you do? And remember, we're not fear mongering, but we're bringing awareness to certain things and we are giving people tools because a lot of times people don't know what they're going through because they don't have the language to know what they're going through. And astrology really helps provide that language, right? Um, for myself, I have Pluto in the third house and my Pluto is in retrograde and you have Pluto in retrograde. They would say that your first child might be a different thinker, that your first child might end up um, having some type of communication issues where they don't communicate the regular way. For myself, my daughter is on the spectrum. It couldn't have manifested any more clearly than something like that. And I always take my chart as an example to show the different influences. Your chart can show you your parents, 
Your chart can show you your, your siblings. And that goes for if you've been adopted as well. It shows you your adopted parents, okay? It will even show you your birth parents if you really wanted to look into it, but it showed you your adopted parents, the people that you've attracted in your life to be your mother figure and your father figure, which could be an auntie, an uncle, right? All right, so Pallas Athena, associated with wisdom, intellect, strategy, and pattern recognition, okay? So this is where your mind is really turned on and you're able to really navigate certain things, right? So we would notice, okay, this person, their Pallas Athena is sitting in their second house. They could possibly be an accountant. If it's in their eighth house, this person could possibly be an expert in the occult studies or they could be an expert in dealing with other people's resources, like an accountant in regards to taxes, right? Vesta relates to devotion, focus, purity, and where you may be service oriented. So say if you have this in your 11th house, philanthropy may be a very, very big thing for you, right? Chiron, known as the wounded healer, and it represents our deepest wounds and our potential to heal ourselves and others, okay? So this is where once you heal it in yourself, you heal it in others, okay? So wherever that is, you'll have deep, deep, deep wounds and challenges within that aspect. Most of the time, it can either reflect a loss, it can either be a, a actual loss, or it could be a loss within a relationship, or it could be a loss within um, just the past. Chiron fourth house with my son. So, okay, Chiron and your wound would definitely then be a uh, family in the fourth house and with your son. So once you start to tap into that aspect of healing your familial ties and healing your ancestral roots, but also healing your family, there will be lots of healing for you as well. And um, because your sun is there, it illuminates, it illuminates it. It makes it a hardcore focus of, of your life as well. Yeah, very, very interesting. Very, very cool. Fourth house, yeah. And typically what is very interesting with that as well is fourth house represents mother. So what you would then be thinking of, okay, I have it in what sign um, for yourself, uh, Charlene, yours would be, um, I believe it would be in what sign? I, I'll have to look, we'll see in the next few ones. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but um, it would definitely have to be in regards to a mother wound. And um, again, what we do is, um, we heal that, when we heal that, then we open things up. And it's really good to see what sign it's in. And we're gonna look at as well as what planets are surrounding it. I can't think at the top of my head. I'm, I don't wanna um, misquote your chart. <laughs> I don't wanna misquote it, but I do have it and we'll see it in a few pages. So I wanna also go on lunar nodes. That's another basic. So this is North node and South node. So North node Rahu indicates your soul's purpose, growth edge, and what you're aiming to learn in this lifetime. So that is your karmic potential. Okay, that is your greatest potential. Your South Node is your Ketu and represents past life talents, comfort zones, and habitual patterns you're moving away from. So that is your karmic past. And that is what you are um, coming away from. Okay, and so I'm not going to focus too much on this, these next few pages. All of this, I always have presentations always available in the YouTube uh, caption below. And in that you will be able to check out all these things. I want to be able to provide this as an educational tool. And please, please, please share it with people. Um, you know, pass the message along. This one here is about the transits and how these particular transits affect your natal chart. And these ones are going to be more so focused on the returns of those planets. Okay. So perfection years, like we spoke on, perfection years is are an ancient astrological technique used to predict significant life themes based on your age. Each year of your life is associated with a different house of your astrological chart, which becomes the activated house for that year, highlighting its themes. Okay. So here um, you will see we have a annual perfections worksheet. Okay. And like Soul said in the beginning, because say she's still 24, and then when she goes 25, she's in her second house. So very, very amazing. Charlene is going to be uh, 
28 this year. So that's fifth house. So fifth house is the house of creativity. So this would be the most important, important, important year for you to get down to the nitty gritty of your creativity. And I know that you have your Pluto in your fifth house. So this is really about a reincarnation type of creativity, almost adjacent to a Lady Gaga creativity where she um, rebuilds her. Yes. Yes. Very amazing. Right. And um, where Lady Gaga kind of makes a whole new entity every single time she creates and stuff like that. I like to use people as that kind of frame of reference for Pluto. She's really much like this character of her, like is a Pluto setting where it's a death and rebirth, you know? And um, it being in your fifth house of Pluto, it is very, very, very empowering. And now that you are in your fifth house perfection year, I don't think there's a better time for you to be focused on creativity. Um, children, if you're focused on children, if you're ready, if you're not, I'm so sorry, knock on wood. <laughs> Little curse babies on me. <laughs> yes, that's amazing. Yes, that's very, very amazing. Awesome. Yes. Okay. So here we're going to get into, um, I'm going to showcase you guys the houses just so we can kind of like get an understanding of the houses a little bit. First house identity, second house, uh, what is yours, your possessions, third house communication, fourth house family, which is also the immune coli. It is known as the IC. And this is basically the opposite of the midheaven. So this is your internal world. This is your family. This is how you internalize the world, okay? Your support system, your village and everything like that all follows into that as well. Here we go. Just checking out the comments. Yes, yes, yes. And then we have fifth house, romance, creativity, children, pleasure. Sorry, let me, oh, hello, Jake. Hello, 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 hi. We're getting into the houses right now. And I was just about to um, discuss the sixth house. So happy to have you here. Um, if you want to be able to start from the beginning, we will have the replay up available on YouTube. Okay, so here we go. Sixth house, daily routines, health and service to others. Seventh house is your descendant, your partnerships. Okay, here we go. Your partnerships, marriage and business relationships. Okay, so this is not just your who you're going to get married to, who you're going to date or anything like that. Uh, this is about your business as well. So this you can even like how you deal with lawyers, how you deal with the lady at the DMV. <laughs> Okay, and is dealing with your paperwork, that is the seventh house. If you notice that you have constant challenges of dealing with people in these kind of like settings of admin work, and you have to do contracts or paperwork with these people, you're like, why do I keep having issues? These people are either rude or maybe I'm too um, short with these people. Look towards your seventh house and it helps you deal with your relationships and it helps you deal with people, not just in your dating, but your business relationships as well. And that is all encompassing to if you're doing your taxes and stuff like that as well, because we also have to like look at um, the houses as the first house has so much to do with the second house. Then the second house has so much to do with the third house. It is a copacetic thing that melts all aspects of our chart. So eighth house, shared resources, transformation, death and rebirth, okay? For myself, I have eighth house, sun and mercury, okay? That means that I know how to deal with shared resources. I know how to deal with transformation, death, and rebirth, but I also know how to share meticulously and speak about occult studies in a practical way. I would basically be the person that would be able to explain the Illuminati and all of their secrets to you. <laughs> Mine is Pisces 7th. Do I self-sabotage my business or am I too idealistic? Mm. And okay, so these two contrasts that you brought up are things that you teeter-totter between. You teeter-totter between those things. One is the sh shadow aspect and one is the light aspect. And we need the contrast and the balance in life. And the contrast and balance is uh, by knowing that the contrast is your boundaries, okay? What lines will you cross? Being able to draw the dark lines within your, within your life, right? Um, knowing now that your seventh house is in Pisces, 
you can really get to know, like, you know, like maybe I self-sabotage, maybe I might um, have Neptune aspects of Pisces where I might have escapism. I might even go ahead and I might be delusional. And that's not to say you're delusional, but that is what Pisces energy literally brings. It can bring delusion. It can bring smoke and mirrors into our lives. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so here let's um, go over ninth house, higher education. Ooh, my screen, sorry, my screen is a little being rude to me. Okay, ninth house, higher education, philosophy, long distance travel. So those long trips, if you want to go ahead over to Southeast Asia, this really helps you out. Okay. And then we have the 10th house, which is career, and 11th house, which is the community, hopes and wishes, 12th house is your subconscious mind, secrets, karma, and institutions, okay? And then, like, we already know the planet's pretty good. Like I said, this stuff, these different aspects and placements, you can check out in your chart. We have about 10 minutes to go, so I'm going to get into doing um, Shalene's reading, actually. So, Shalene, you have a beautiful, beautiful chart. I love seeing people's chart. I was letting everybody, I was letting Shalene know earlier that um, with me, the other chart that I'm going to be doing, and I might just focus on Shalene's chart and do Taylor's chart another day, because I'm thinking about doing another astrology, one more, just like a kind of like an encore where I can teach about draconian, because I want to be able to show you your draconian chart, Shalene. So I might do one more workshop and I might incorporate Taylor's into that one so we can focus solely on your chart right now. Okay, so here I would look at the ascendant. Let's check out, amazing, right? Yeah, so here I would check out your ascendant. So um, empty houses does not mean that you're not gonna have challenges, but it's not the most significant thing, right? Um, most of the time, people with empty first houses, um, people can constantly kind of confuse you and not understand how you are perceived in this world. And they might not always be able to judge you correctly on based on who you are. Your second house of your own resources, that doesn't matter that much to you. It is not a sole focus within your life. It is not about the money. It is about the mission. We have the third house that is also a little empty. When we see empty houses, what we do is then we look at the sign, right? The first house leads in cancer, right? So then we would say, okay, so she has more cancerian energy, which is really cool because you have your son. So people do kind of see you a little bit for who you are in glimpses and chances. And that only comes when you start to speak and you start to actually show yourself. But if it was just look, them looking at your face and they're looking at you as a person, they would heavily underestimate you and your intellect that you come with, okay? So then we have here, Leo, it takes over, and I do astrology not by whole houses, I do it by tropical. I feel like people that are born on cusp, like how you are, would, and you're in a, like a cusp time period of the 28th, you're at a almost the second deacon of your time period, but you're still in the first deacon. So what would end up happening is your chart, if we did whole houses, I don't feel it would fully accurately show you, okay? So we're going to make sure we always do tropical for people that are on cusp. And if you aren't on a cusp, then you would do whole houses and it will still work for you. But for people that it's not, use this method, okay? We have the fourth house where we have the moon, we have the north node, okay? And we also have the Chiron, okay? So your emotions, your mother, okay? The moon is highly highly, highly, highly tied to this, not tightly, highly tied to this, okay? Uh, your north node is also here. So this means that is your, literally your destiny for you to work on your wounds and you to do it in a way that the world sees. When you heal yourself, that is your destiny and you are able to show the entire world through the pains and the di different things that you survived, okay? Is all going to be having to do with family. And it could literally represent somebody that is extremely tied to their ancestral land. They're extremely tied to their family. And they're also going to manifest a very, very empowering home 
something that is extraordinary of a home and really reflects them. And the world will be able to look at them and say like, okay, I look up to this person because of even their home life and the, the aspects that they show within overcoming those wounds. Um, this has to do with uh, motherly wounds, matriarchal wounds. This can even be an entire line of your the women in your family you are healing and is something that you are meant to do. And you are going to be breaking the generational curses of your entire matriarchal line. That is, this is a very, very powerful person um, having these aspects. And then when we go over to the fifth house, the planet of Pluto. And when I when you look at someone's chart, you're gonna see the retrogrades. And remember, a retrogrades means internal. It means I point inward, I look inward, I am working as me inward. Okay. Then we have Pluto. Okay, and Pluto is in retrograde. So inwardly, you are able to look inwardly, okay? And you are able to rebirth and rebuild and you are able to self-destruct, right? But if you start to use it to your advantage, like right now you are in your fifth house perfection year, this is an optimal time for you to really, really be focused on, I would say, getting photos done. Photos is very, very helpful. Fifth house things, getting photos done, doing books, something that highlights yourself, like getting a new, getting new headshots, getting um, books to put those headshots in, writing your own book, things like that. Even if you decided to do a seminar or something like that, you would uh, fare very well with this as well. Okay. And then the sixth house we have Jupiter and Jupiter is the all expansive, but it is in retrograde. So again, this is an introverted thing. You are empowered by daily routine. You are empowered by keeping things at a meticulous schedule, meticulous craft. And the thing is, is it is in Capricorn, okay? And having Jupiter in Capricorn is money, 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 okay? So you being focused towards anything that has to do with daily life, helping somebody with their daily routine. You might even be somebody that can be a life coach, somebody that is able to empower people onto their path and help people that are kind of locked into almost like a task paralysis. You would be the person that would empower them the most. And then we have the seventh house, okay? And seventh house, Neptune. Okay, so there's a blurry line there and it's in Capricorn. So it's empowering. You can get money there. Um, your business relationships will be very, very fruitful, right? But there is kind of like a smoke and mirrors effect. Not everything is going to be what is promised to you. And one of the things that you have to do, and I'm so sorry for everyone entering right now. We're going to be wrapping up soon, like within a minute or so, but I'm going to finish up uh, reading Charlene's chart here. We're in the seventh house, but I just want to let you guys know we're going to be wrapping up just in a little bit, okay? But so uh, the seventh house, one of the things that could happen with Neptune and Capricorn in your seventh house is somebody might try to pull a wool over your eyes with business dealings, relationships. But now that you know something like that, it could have either happened in the past or it might happen in the future. Now with Saturn, let's look, Saturn is in your 10th house, you're going to, you're 28, so you're going to be going into your uh, Saturn return very soon, so I want you to think, okay, Saturn return, Neptune, Capricorn energy, Jupiter, lock all those things together, prepare yourself for the biggest challenge might be during your Saturn return, could be contracts, and you having to make sure that you check double check everything with contracts. That means read things over and over again and make sure that you are clear and concise and make sure you say to people, is that really what you meant? And be very, very meticulous about that. So no one can pull a wool over your eyes, okay? Uranus, the planet of rebellion is actually in the sign of Aquarius within your relationships. This means you are actually technologically advanced. And it also means that you might even, uh, your dating aspect, aspects might be as a person that is actually literally, um, you know, that is your biggest fortune, right? Um, okay, so sun in the 12th house, and I'm so sorry if this cuts me off, guys. <laughs> um, maybe what we can do is try to uh, set it up 
for the next workshop because I think it's cutting me off on my time here. But, um, and I'll get back to you, Charlene, um, so we can finish this reading up. But um, yeah, I wanna be able to go into your chart and talk about your 11th house because it has a lot to do with community and you working and you finding your love and your passion in that uh, 11th house as well. Yeah, um, we're running out of time. So I want to thank you guys and like send you guys so much love. The whole presentation is going to be available underneath the YouTube link. 